Hey there, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode of Lutherville. For this episode, we're going to be doing a product review of the Henry Repeating Arms single shot 12 gauge shotgun. <laughs> now that's the prettiest sound you'll ever hear. It's just like heavenly music to my ears. Man, I get such a boot when I hear Rudy Toot Toot. Reaching for a gun and going bang, bang I come alive Each time a 45 begins to bang, bang In gangster movies I love that scene The night Sorry Just, uh Just channeling a little summer Hey, let's get to some, um <clears throat> Technical Specifications Back in 1860, which incidentally is nine years before my oldest American ancestor was born, gunsmith Benjamin Tyler Henry invented the Henry rifle, which was the first really reliable lever-action rifle ever made. Now, the Henry was manufactured by the New Haven Arms Company, and in 1866, owner Oliver Winchester changed the company name to Winchester Repeating Arms Company. Winchester then modified the Henry rifle and turned it into the Winchester Model 1866. 130 years later, the Imperato family of father and son, Louis and Anthony, secured the trademark to the Henry name and started Henry Repeating Arms, where they built replicas of the original Henry rifle. Now, boasting the motto, made in America or not made at all, none of their manufacturing is done overseas. Henry is a proud American company employing American citizens. Now, as Henry Repeating Arms gained more success, they started to branch out into numerous calibers and the styles of long guns, all in the tradition of Old West lever action and single shot firearms. Today, Anthony Imperato is probably the most recognizable face of any firearm manufacturer and stands by a lifetime warranty for all Henry firearms, a guarantee unprecedented in the firearms industry. Along with the release of the 12 gauge announced in January of 2017, they also released a 20 gauge, they released a 410, and they released single shot rifles in 223, 243, 308, 44 Magnum, 4570. I mean, it's pretty amazing how many of these single shot guns they came out with. And they're all available in steel and brass. And the action opens the same on all of them with this release lever right underneath the hammer that opens up the chamber for you to put a round in. Now, some of them have extractors, some of them have ejectors, and all of them you gotta kinda muscle them closed. You know, you gotta, you gotta use some force to lock it closed, but um, they're all really cool. <laughs> well, if you're anything like me, the whole reason that you really wanna watch a review video of a firearm is to see some shooting, some, some figures on triggers. So that's what we're gonna do. And let's go over some of the ammunition that I'll be using for the video. I'll be using some Winchester Birdshot, which is designed against bird targets. I'll be using some Remington Buckshot, which is designed to be used against deer. And finally, I'll also try out some Federal Premium Slugs, which are designed for taking out Terminators. The very first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot some buckshot. Now, ordinarily, I think people would tend to, uh, well, they would start small. 
or they would go big or they would they would go big and they would come down small so i figured i'm gonna i'm gonna throw everybody off <laughs> i'm gonna start right in the middle so i don't usually fire buckshot and i don't usually shoot at steel targets um see the thing is with a with a shotgun shooting steel just doesn't tend to be that fun because if you get really close with any kind of long gun then you're always going to hit and if you get too far away the pattern starts to spread and you're still going to hit so i don't do this all that often and in fact this is the very first time that i'm ever shooting buckshot out of this firearm so uh, i'm about 30 feet away from the target we have a 12 inch steel plate Let's see what happens. Let's see how much she kicks. Well, it's like the song says, a gun is like a woman. It's all in how you hold her. <laughs> wow. Okay, that had some kick. <laughs> and at 30 feet, I knocked the target over. <laughs> let's pause, shall we? And, uh, and let's set up a little further back because 30 feet was clearly way too close. <laughs> Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, we are now going to shoot from about, let's make it 50. I've got this one marked out at 50 feet. Now, on camera, this actually looks really far because I'm using a really wide angle lens. Um, so it looks a lot further than 50 feet, but rest assured it is not. I am at this point about 50 feet from the target. And again, we're still shooting, still shooting the buckshot. And one thing I will say is that the recoil on this thing was very manageable, even though the buckshot really kicks. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, even from 50 feet, <laughs> the buckshot is knocking my target over. I guess we're gonna have to go out to 60. Wow. But again, it doesn't really hurt, you know, as long as you have that thing positioned well on your shoulder, you know, have it nice, have it rested nice in your shoulder. Uh, it's not a big deal, but yeah, let's, let's go a little further back. We'll come back here to about 60 feet and see if this <laughs> will allow us to take more than one shot without having to set the target bag up. All right, here we go. Some more Remington buckshot out of the Henry at 60 feet. Will it blast that target over? Now I notice I've been hitting kind of low, so I should probably aim a little higher. Yeah, that definitely hit low. And I was aiming higher, so good to know. Hitting a little bit low, that was what, three shots. I only have five. I only got five of these pieces of buckshot, so two more left. Still don't know if that's gonna knock the target over because I think I missed that time. So let's go a little higher and see what happens. And it still knocks the target over at 60 feet. That was unexpected. All right. <laughs> I, have, I have one shot left with this buckshot. So let's, uh, let's move the camera back and I'll try one more time. I don't know, I guess I'll do 90 feet away. Um, that's about the only thing I can do. So, all right, let's try it, see what happens. All right, kids, this is it. I had five rounds. This is the fifth one. We are now at 90 feet from the target. Every single time I've hit, I've hit extremely low, very low. So I'm definitely gonna aim higher this time. And we'll see if I can hit from 90 feet with the buckshot. We'll see what happens.
All right, there we go. 90 feet, a really good solid hit right in the center and didn't knock the target over this time. <laughs> so I guess shooting buckshot from my Henry, I have to be at least 90 feet away. <laughs> Well, let's move on to doing what is my favorite thing to do with my Henry, and that is shooting some clays. This is something that I have kind of self-taught myself how to do, and I'm shocked that I have never done it any sooner. I have been shooting for a really long time, I mean, since I was a little kid, but I never shot clays until, gosh, a couple months ago. And the reason that I decided to take this up was because, like I said, it can get kind of dull to shoot steel with a shotgun. So I thought, well, what could be challenging? You know, what could be a lot of fun? And I thought, hey, moving targets. <laughs> moving targets are definitely gonna be a bigger challenge. So why don't we give that a try? I got that one. So as you can see, I can actually hit them on occasion, <laughs> but I don't always hit them. And that's great, because to me, the thing that makes shooting fun is when it is a challenge, right? If you hit all the time, it's no fun. And if you miss all the time, it's no fun. So having that challenging balance is always enjoyable. And speaking of balance, you notice when I bend over like that and I'm loading up a new clay, I'm holding the Henry with just one hand. You know, that was when I noticed just how well balanced this gun is. I mean, it stands to reason because it doesn't have anything extraneous on it. There's no magazine tube. There's not even an extra barrel. I really hit that one. <laughs> so yeah, it's a wonderfully, wonderfully balanced gun. And obviously from the configuration that you've seen in the photos and all of that, it's also great for right-handed or left-handed shooters because everything is centered throughout the weapon. In fact, the release lever can be pushed in either direction, either left or right, it doesn't matter. Either way, we'll still open the action up. And that is a feature that does not exist on all guns. Some guns, you can only push the lever one way. So it's kind of a cool, design idea that, that Henry incorporated into the shotgun. Let's see how we do on this one. Got that one too. All right. Well, not doing so bad today. And the other thing about having a single shot is, you know, I thought that single shots were kind of silly. I thought it was a dumb idea. Like, why would you want something that you can only shoot one round at a time? But... The thing I realized after a while is I'm a really slow shooter. Got that one too. Huh, I'm actually doing well today, which is nice since I'm on camera. But as I was saying, I'm a very slow shooter. I really take my time. I set the shot up. And so I realized, you know, with the incredibly slow rate at which I tend to fire a weapon, a single shot gun really isn't going to slow me down. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I really have fun doing this because, like I said, I, I, don't, I don't always hit, although I'm doing quite well today. Like that time. No, I did hit it. <laughs> I barely hit it. It only split off into two pieces whenever... It does that, I know I didn't hit it too hard. I also waited a really long time to hit that one. Normally, once it gets out that far, ah, oh, forget it. I don't stand a chance. So right now, I'm actually using the modified choke, which came with the Henry. And that's definitely allowing me to hit some stuff that's a little bit further out. Without the choke, not so sure I'd be breaking clays that are going that far out there because the spread gets to be a little too much. I've actually had instances where <laughs> I've had clays that have 
hit the ground and they didn't break and they had one little pellet hole through them. So uh, I thought I missed. Turns out I did hit it. I just didn't hit it very hard. Oh, missed that one. All right. Well, once you miss one, I guess it's time to move on. <laughs> so let's go to something else that I have never done yet with my Henry, and that is shooting some slugs. Before I shot the slugs, I swapped out the modified choke with a cylinder choke. Now, for those who may be new to firearms, let me quickly explain choke tubes to you. You see, most shotguns have a barrel with a consistent diameter all the way from the chamber to the muzzle. In choked shotguns, the muzzle end is a little wider, and it has threads inside, allowing you to screw in a small metal pipe called a choke tube. Choke tubes constrict the diameter of the muzzle in order to keep the shotgun pellets more concentrated over longer distances. Now, choke tubes come in many different diameters, and they have strange names like modified and cylinder and full. And you should never fire a choked shotgun without a choke tube installed because the projectile exiting the muzzle can potentially damage the threads inside the barrel. And when you're shooting slugs out of a choked shotgun, you typically want to use a cylinder choke. Cylinder chokes provide no constriction and keep the muzzle open to the full width while protecting the threads inside the barrel. So, now you know why I was using my modified choke when firing birdshot at clays and why I installed my cylinder choke to shoot slugs. All right, boys and girls, we are ready to shoot some slugs out of the Henry. I think I'll start out at about 70 feet which is right about here. And uh, we'll see what happens. If it goes well and we don't knock the target over, <laughs> then maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll move back to, to 80. So, shooting uh, slugs on 10 inch steel from 70, I believe this is 70, yeah, this is about 70, 70 feet away from, from the target. And that definitely knocked the target over. <laughs> All right, 70 feet, too close. Let's, uh, let's move it back. <laughs> I sure do have fun with this, Henry. Okay, this is the 70 foot mark. So we're gonna have to move it back a bit further. And what, what, is, what? what are you laughing at? Oh, it's the ears, huh? Yeah, I know. They, they look like something like Prince or Cindy Lauper would wear, but I dig them, you know? Or is it the boots? The boots, you know, there's a reason, there's a reason that the pant legs are tucked in. Two words, fire ants. Did you ever have a fire ant crawl up your pants? It's not fun. <laughs> 90 feet, slugs are still knocking the target over. Did you see what happened right there? <laughs> the wind muff on my lapel microphone just blew off in the wind. <laughs> so I'm doing this part as a voiceover. But I can say after firing slugs, birdshot, and buckshot out of the Henry, it is a fantastic firearm. It handles every type of ammunition really well. The recoil is incredibly manageable. And the craftsmanship, the aesthetics, the dependability of the gun is absolutely flawless. I've never had an issue with anything functioning on it, and it has always been a really great firearm. Something I've never seen anyone do in a firearm review video is to go over the manual. And for me personally, that's something that I've always been kind of curious about. So let's go over that. So we start out with the front cover of the manual, and then the first page is the Henry Guarantee. The next few pages just cover the warranty and the safe handling of your brand new firearm. And then here we get to a really cool illustration 
that shows you all the different pieces and parts of the Henry single shot shotguns in all the different calibers that they're available in. Now the page right before has a cool list of all the specs. It tells you the size of the shells that can go into each of the different models of the guns. It gives you the weight of all of them and it lets you know the barrel length and so on and so forth. And then this page I thought was interesting under the ammunition. You notice it says at the very bottom slugs are not recommended with a choke. So keep that in mind <laughs> for something that it shows you a little bit later on. So here it goes over some basic maintenance, things like that, and then this page shows you how to remove and install different choke tubes. And this gun comes with a modified choke tube. But you notice here on this page it says never fire your shotgun without a choke in place. So, <laughs> earlier they say don't fire a slug with a choke, but then there it says you should always use a choke, which is kind of strange. So I assume what they want you to do is use a cylinder choke. Right here it gives you the basics of field stripping the gun, but on this page it does specifically say that you do not have to disassemble the shotgun in order to clean it sufficiently and keep it operating properly. Because it's so simple, it doesn't have a magazine, it doesn't have any kind of moving parts in terms of the action, you can pretty much just clean the barrel. Now here it goes over a detailed breakdown of all the parts, so if you need to replace something, if something were to break on the firearm, and the page right before gives you a list of all the parts, which is really great because if you need to order something, you know exactly what those pieces and parts are called. And then finally here at the back of the manual we have a little history on Henry and Henry repeating arms and Mr. Benjamin Tyler Henry who invented the first Henry rifle. And then here of course we have the back page of the manual. Well now that we've shot the Henry a few times it definitely needs a good cleaning. So let's go over the best way to clean a single shot shotgun. So when it comes to cleaning my Henry, what I will typically do is keep it really, really simple. I'll just open it up and do maybe one squirt of ballast all down the barrel and just let that sit for a little while. And because of the fact that you know the manual even specifically states that you don't really need to take this gun apart to clean it, I usually don't. I, I usually just, uh, just do that. I don't bother to remove the pin and take everything apart. I imagine eventually that's something I'd probably do, but for the most part, all I really do is clean the barrel. So I'll run a cleaning patch down the barrel a couple of times until, you know, everything is coming out fairly clean. And that's really about it. And then I'll also, you know, try to clean as much as I can around the firing pin and make sure that area is clean and around the ejector as well. Make sure that there's no excess oil there or anything like that. And, and then obviously I do wipe down the whole outside, make sure I get fingerprints off of the barrel and off of the receiver and things like that. But Otherwise, that's really all there is to cleaning this weapon because it's so simple that you don't have a lot of pieces that get dirty. Well, that about sums things up for the Henry single shot. You know, I think if you are really interested in Old West type guns, if you're into single action revolvers and coach guns and that sort of thing, this is going to be right up your alley. I mean, personally, I really love classics, you know. Way out yonder in the Golden West. Pioneers on the frontier. Outlaws and heroes. Annie Oakley, Wyatt Earp, Billy the Kid, Butch and Sundance. There's something very romantic about that era of American history. And a firearm like this, it definitely takes you back to that time. 
So I hope you've uh, enjoyed our little trip into the past. And I have to say, it doesn't matter if you're purchasing a first time firearm for a young girl, young boy, or if you're an adult who just wants to add something very classic to your collection. I highly, highly recommend the Henry for those sort of things. And remember folks, as I always say, if your ambitions do not scare you, they're not big enough. Oh, dear.